So here I am working on the Rio trike about again. I gotta get on the Chevrolet. I'm gonna, this weekend, I might uh, pull the rocker panels and the things I wanted to fix, I got two of the major things done, the rear valances and the front grill screen moldings, but I wanna fix the clock, fix the rocker panel moldings so they don't come unclipped and refoam the front seat. You know, I got until mid-April before we get any real cruising weather so there's in a big hurry on it but i've been uh working on this pretty much all all week in my spare time but i just did a major change on it and that is i brought the wheel closer to the engine and by doing that i didn't change the length of this i just took my plasma cutter and that's probably still slightly hot so let me get a pointer what I did was I cut with the plasma cutter from about there all the way around to the other side to about there and then just tilted that back. That was more upright. I looked at some of the photos of this before I cut it apart and this was almost level. It's just it was slightly off so that's the way it is now. You can see how the fender moves a little bit so if I put it Right there, it's pretty much all level, level, but the gap here was too big and I didn't like it. I want to keep this thing compact, tricycly looking. So now is the time to change things on it because, you know, it's all roughed in. So, you know, that's why I rough them in, get it functioning roughed in, and then I can spend my time grinding welds and making it look pretty. But for now, it's just making it function. So I got the frame where I like it. Now I'm going to start uh, setting up controls for it. This is how I'm kind of thinking of making the clutch and the brake handle kind of like this. I'll, that'll just be a little stop there and I'll have a hole on this side for the cable for the clutch and this side for the cable on the brake on that side. But you squeeze it and you get go or you squeeze it and you get stop. That'll probably be down about like that. So it has some travel. So it moves and I'm gonna have to wait until I get the, the cables on order and it's supposed to be here in a couple of days, but then I can figure out where to drill holes and you know how long, and I'll have to put a spring between whatever linkage I make here in the cable so your hand doesn't absorb all, uh, you know, from the belt. And I'm going to have to put a fairly heavy spring there, too. But I may have to shorten this. Um, you know, I'll change all these. To, you know, that's no big deal. I can cut it off and weld a new bolt on and change the length of that very easily. So I'm not, not too concerned about that. I've already, like I say, chopped this off and tilted that back and welded it back up to close this gap up and the throttle cable I put on here ran it under the engine and over to there and that's a perfect place so that's that's kind of the way I wanted it right here I have a knob for it but it's black I want to paint it red but this is going to be cream and I'm going to make a sheet metal an attractive sheet metal cover for this and it's going to say obviously stop slow run fast and it's you know kind of simulate the shit when a car's in with the consoles in park the lever's up like that when it's in drive it's back like so so that's kind of what why i put it on this way i kind of want that that look to it and you know and another thing too is i've used every single component from the tricycle except for those wheels the front and rear wheels and these bearings are in use on here. So really that's still, you know, 99% of the original Sears tricycle is still there. Yeah, I added on to it and changed some things, but I'm trying to keep as much of the original Sears tricycle as I can. And obviously the original Rio engine and, you know, to keep it that, give it that real look and I think I talked about this in another video I'll put a nipple on here and a 45 going down 
and I'm going to make a muffler. I'll just weld a, a, a something with half inch pipe thread in the top and it's going to be about this. We'll probably start the half inch wide as the pipe comes out and then it'll come out like that and it'll be across. And I'll weld baffles and stuff in it and make it so the engine's quiet. I'll, I'm totally going to make the muffler and the exhaust will be back here about that wide and so thick just kind of hanging back there. I think that'd look kind of cool. I'll take this off, get another washer painted up when I paint green and just put a washer there instead of that. I made two off that template to so I'll get these ground out. I plasma cut them out. I'll get them ground out even with one another and then we'll put the bends in them that we need to. I may need to heat it with the torch and find some tubing to fold them over. But we'll get them bent. I got one pretty much all bent. Got the other one yet to do. I've been using the pipe and the torch to heat it and uh, bend it but it's going to go about there and the grip finger things will hang down so it'll have about that much movement and that's perfect for the brake the clutch might need a little bit more but we'll worry about that when we get to it I might have to extend this to get more leverage on the, the clutch but this I think will be perfect for the for the brake and uh, we'll make the other one for this side now this is what I'm talking about these little ribs hang down just a, a smidge where the fingers are. Yeah, it's going to have tricycle grips and tricycle pedals for foot pegs. These, these pedals will be on here like so. They'll flip around like a paddle. I saved the little washers and everything from the shafts so I can reuse them and these will fit that. So. Anyway, let me uh, get the other one like this bent up and I'll get them filed and finish up a little bit and we'll get them mounted to the handlebar and then my cable's supposed to be here today or tomorrow and we'll start getting things hooked up. Got both of the little grip or clutch brake. This is the brake and this is the clutch. You can see I got a little heavy handed with the torch and started to melt it so I'll have to grind that out before I paint it but they'll mount kind of, does that give you an idea what it's going to do? That's a stop, and I'll glue a little piece of rubber to it so it doesn't scratch the, the paint, but then I'll have to mount the cable back in here, you know, so it, somewhere where it has some pull. I'll figure that out once I get the cable and stuff and get these on there and if I have to weld something on to them for the cable so be it but those are the basic handles for the clutch and the brake. I got a belt and it looks like I might shorten this idler pulley thing up a little bit here you know I just I don't know I just kind of think it would be better a little shorter but I think that I've tried several belts I took this to the auto parts and tried several belts and that was the best fitting one the engines mounted about midway and that'll totally work and I also got the cable to hook the brake and the clutch up and made the little levers which I think I showed this is videos a couple days since I've worked on it and I also this is the belt that I got the size or whatever so hopefully that works out. If it doesn't, we'll get something else. And uh, But I think it'll be fine. Another thing I got was a recoil starter. This is the ratchet deal, much like what similar version of what like Briggs and Stratton used with the little balls and stuff in there. The blower housing with the got like screws welded in the back and one of them's broken off so we're gonna fix that I'm gonna take this all apart and bead blast it and paint it paint it but I don't want um, you know I don't want this to catch clothes or clothes to get caught down in here or anything if somebody's wearing something loose but get a load of this we got a, the pull handle is red which will be kind of nice 
I even I got this on eBay, this uh, decal. So that'll go on right there. You can see the remnants of the original decal on there. But you lubricate this oiler, which is on this one too. And there's a screw in that on this, this one here, as you can see. And then that oil there oils that bronze bushing down in there because that, that spins on the shaft. So hopefully that's all. I don't see a hole midway on this one. Yeah, it does, it does have a hole midway. So, okay, so that, that was part of the recoil. And uh, I was just wondering. But anyway, there we go. We got a recoil, so I'm going to start cleaning this up, too. This blower housing's in pretty nice shape, other than, like I said, that one screw, and we'll fix that. I ground that head of that stud until it punched out, and then I cut another one the same dimensions, and I'm going to just tack it in here. It's the right size. I might have to clean that hole out a little bit, but I got the exact same thread and cut it the same length and ground the head so it's the same. So when it's tacked in there, it'll look correct. And I'll give that a little tacky in there, and yeah, I put a nut on it just to hold it in place, but same thread, same size as the other studs. So let me give that a little tacky, and then we'll get this in the bead blast cabinet and get everything primed up. Maybe it's supposed to be a nice day tomorrow, so maybe I can turn this green tomorrow. And uh, the rest of the recoil parts that need to be primed. Getting the primer shook up, I bead blasted part of the recoil housing. I'm going to give it a metal etching prime. I don't think I have ever restored a blower housing for a lawnmower engine that hasn't had dents in it. I'm going to hit it with some uh, sandable primer because you can see some little tiny rust pits in it. Very tiny. And I think I'll just throw a couple coats of the gray sandable primer on it. Give it a sand out and it'll be ready to spray. There we go, all primed up. We'll let that dry overnight and give it a coat of green. I didn't put sandable primer on the inside of the blower housing, just the outside to fill some of those rust pits. That's actually the, I put a couple coats on, I 400 sanded it out, and then I just put one more coat on and I'll give that a 400 before I paint it tomorrow. It has got its final sand out. Came out really nice. Like I say, no dents. It had a couple little tiny rust pits that the filler primer filled. And it sanded almost to the bare metal in a few spots. So I just had to be careful. You can see a little bit of the green uh, metal etching primer through the gray there. And a little bit over there. So we're ready to paint that. I just got to tack cloth it off. I got the part for the spring ready to paint. Part for the recoil assembly. That's what the rope and all that stuff, that's where the rope pull bit goes. And uh, even the nuts and a washer for the engine for right here will be painted green. That's the rest of the recoil parts there. The recoil is unique to these Rio engines. You can't put any other recoil on them because these engines run, the crank runs counterclockwise. Most engines, you know, the pole would be here. This one will pull will be up here. So you have to use a Rio recoil starter. All right, let me get the paint mixed up here and I'm gonna use my uh, favorite gun, which is my Badger. I think it's a model 400. So let me get the paint and the shaker and we'll get everything mixed up here and ready to spray. The blower housing's all painted. It looks really, really nice. Came out good. Painted, obviously, both sides so we don't get any rust in it in the future. The other side was painted originally. Got the spring thing all painted. This was painted on both sides, the spring side and the 
side that shows this is the side you see there will be a decal on that about oiling it and this is the recoil and where the air intake is and that's where the spring screws on there's a few little pits I didn't put filler primer or anything on this because I didn't want to fill in these cooling screens or make them look funny so I just kind of left that the way it is and it came out really nice the uh, nut or the washer for the cylinder head the nuts for the blower for that to attach to the uh, blower housing these screws here are what attach that and uh, I painted these two little screws which attach this little aluminum thing that the rope goes in. Check that out. It's even got a little red rope pull handle because the grips are going to be red. The pedals are going to be red. And then the trike about and the, any of the writing on it. And the Rio is all going to be red. That Rio there will be red. This will be green back in here a little bit. These stripes will be green. The rest will be cream. It's going to look like the lawnmower, like I say. So anyway, I'm going to start uh, working on the controls now. Getting, I'm going to let my paint tack up. And then I'm going to start mounting things. And yeah, that paint's still tacky, so I'm not going to start any cars or do anything till that's dry to the touch. I don't want to do anything to stir dust up in the garage. That paint doesn't have a speck in it. It's absolutely perfect. I carried it outside to spray it, and I just hung it up in here. And I didn't video spraying it because I ended up my nitro gloves were covered in paint and I didn't want to get it all over my camera. So I got the cigar box full of springs that I bought in an estate sale a long time ago. It's been a gold mine for when I need like a throttle return spring or just a spring for something and I need one for the clutch and I'm thinking this one might have the, it's pretty strong, maybe a little not quite strong enough so I'm going to kind of go through but I think that one will work and I got to go to the hardware and get a small screw that will go through the tip of each end here through the handlebars so about an inch and a quarter long and I'm going to get it in uh, stainless steel too. I went and got um, some hardware to mount the cables this will there will be a tab welded here and then you know you can adjust it and there will be one back here or somewhere we'll figure out where to mount those I'm going to get these mounted I might cut the threads off this and kind of weld it in there somewhere where it's out of sight where I'll have a sheet metal thing built to guide the cables and this is what I originally got for the cables but I, for the brake and the clutch but I don't like these so I'm going with uh, this with the solid wire core this is the core wire for it and I went and got a new pair of Z-benders because I couldn't find mine. I have a pair. My dad gave them to me years ago because he does model airplanes. And he got a pair for himself and then got another pair for me. And I think I can find them. So anyway, picked up another, went to the prop shop in, in Warren. And I'll show you one thing they had that I'd love to buy. It's, I'll, I'll put a little photo of it here in the video it's a 15 remote controlled 59 Chevy with hydraulics that bounces and stuff but it's like $600 so yeah I can't afford that but it was super cool this is the place where I got the um all this stuff from this spring was out of my box of springs there but yeah they have if you're building a mini bike or a go kart or motorcycle, that's uh, they sell outdoor Toro and whatnot, but they have everything under the sun. If they don't have it, it doesn't exist. That place was amazing. Clutches like this stuff, anything for a mini bike, build these little cable ends. Uh, I was just, it's the first time I stopped in there, and I, um, I wish they'd stopped in there years ago. What a neat place. I might edit up a video here right now so you can see what all I'm doing with this. So I think uh, after running around, spending most of my day out running around doing errands and picking up some odds and ends and whatnot, I just don't have the motivation to 
turn to it or work on it right now. So I think tomorrow or maybe this weekend or or uh, early next week, I think sometime next week they're predicting a bunch of snow too. So that'll be good days to come out here and work on it. So we'll get to moving probably tomorrow. I'll get these lever handle things mounted and start hooking, hooking stuff up and uh, figuring out what I got to do to do this. But anyway, I'm going to end the video here so you can see what I've been doing, what's going on with it. If you like the video, hit the like button. It helps. If you like my channel at 348 Engine Icon that pops up there, will subscribe you. And thank you for watching my video.